Have you ever wondered what kind of drainage you have in your garden? In this video I'm going to show you a very simple task for measuring the drainage in your soil. The technique I'm going to show you is called the percolation test or perk test for short. I'll go through the whole procedure and show you how to do it and then at the end of the video I'll give you some pointers what you should do if your drainage is either not good enough or if your drainage is too good. All you need for this test is a shovel, some water and a ruler. Step one is to dig a hole, about a foot in diameter and a foot deep. I'll come back when I have that done. So I finished digging my hole, and of course I picked a spot with lots of rocks, but that's okay. Whatever you find, dig the hole there. It should be about a foot in diameter and about a foot deep. Those measurements aren't real exact. As long as you're close to that, it will work. Then what I'd like to do is get rid of all the loose soil in the bottom. You want a fairly hard bottom because that will make measuring easier later. If you want to check your hole, get your ruler, check a depth, make sure you have at least 12 inches. And I have about 14 inches here and that's okay. Now what we do is we fill the hole with water. We want the soil around this hole saturated with water before we start the test. So fill the hole and don't do the test until all the water has run out. Sometimes that only takes five, six hours. Other times they'll take overnight depending on your soil. The easiest way to do this, fill the hole, come back the next day and finish the test. That's it for today. I left my hole sit overnight and by morning it was completely drained. So what I've done now is refilled it with water and then you take a ruler and just measure the depth. Stick the ruler in until you hit the bottom you can take your finger, mark where the water line is, pull it out. I've got nine and a half inches. Write down the time and the depth, and then come back later and do it again. Now as far as the time interval goes, you can do this a couple different ways. To keep the math simple, just come back once every hour. And keep doing this until the hole is almost empty. If you're good at math, you don't have to worry about doing it on exactly one hour intervals. Just come around whenever you feel like it, take a measurement, mark down the time, and then you'll have to calculate what the intervals are. What we want to do is get a rate of dropping of water per hour. And I'm going to show you how to do that calculation in a second. Now that you've collected your readings, what do you do with it? This table shows the results for a typical measurement. You'll see that the time intervals have been done in one hour increments. And beside each one is the depth measurement. It started out at 11 inches, and after the first hour, it dropped to 8.5. To figure out how much the water dropped, just subtract those two values. 11 minus 8.5 gives you 2.5. That tells you that the water dropped 2.5 inches per hour. Do the same with the other time increments, and then take all of your drops per hour and average them. And that will give you your average perk rate, which in this case was 2.5 inches per hour. If you measured the depth in centimeters, the calculations would be exactly the same. This is a fairly typical set of data, but in real life, it doesn't always look quite so pretty. Here's the data from my test. You'll notice that I used irregular time intervals, and that works too as long as you do the calculations for it. You'll notice that my drop rate was very fast initially, at about 6 inches per hour, and then it dropped off to about 3.5 inches per hour. Now my average perk rate was 4.7. This type of result is not that unusual. When the hole is filled with water, the water runs out sideways very quickly near the top because the top 4 or 5 inches of my soil has a lot of organic matter in it and that organic matter is sucking the water out of the hole sideways very quickly. Once the water level drops below the organic level, it moves much more slowly sideways into the hole and a lot of water is moving down and the whole process slows down. My values for drop per hour are much lower in the bottom half of the hole. Now I could just average these, come up with the 4.7 and that's really good enough for most gardeners. The true perk rate for this hole is probably closer to 3.5 and we should ignore that initial data which is caused by the top layer of soil. 
So now that you have your perk right, what does that tell you about your garden? Ideal soil will have a value of 2 inches per hour. Anything between 1 and 3 indicates good soil and you have good drainage. If you have that kind of result, don't worry about your drainage. You can plant pretty much any kind of plant you want and it should do fine in your garden. If your value is below 1, your drainage is too low and there's some things you can do to improve that. On the other hand, if your value is above 3, water drains too quickly out of your soil and you also have an issue. If you have one of these extreme values, what can you do? Let's first have a look at soil that has poor drainage with a value of less than 1. After a heavy rain, you probably notice that you'll see lots of puddles on your soil and they take a while to seep and your soil stays wet for a long period of time. If you have this kind of soil, it's important to pick plants that like to grow in wetter conditions. Plants that are very fussy and want really good drainage probably won't do well in your soil. So pick the right plants for the area that you have. You can improve your drainage. And the best way to do that is to get more organic material into the soil. If you're creating a new bed, add it at the time you create the bed. Mix it right into the soil. In an established bed, just layer it on top as a mulch. Over time, that organic matter will improve your drainage by increasing the amount of soil aggregation you have. If you have a perk value of greater than 3, it means water runs away very quickly. You really have quite dry soil. Again, it's important to pick the right plants for that type of soil. But most plants will grow fine, provided you add enough irrigation. Fertilizing is also a bit of a problem. When you add fertilizer to your ground, rain will now wash it very quickly through the soil layer into the subsoil where your plant roots can't get it. So it's better to fertilize small amounts much more frequently than to put a whole lot of fertilizer on all at once. The best way to improve this kind of soil is to add organic matter. The organic matter acts like a sponge and it will soak up the water, hold it in the soil longer, and slow down the drainage process. Again, if you're making a new bed, dig it right into the soil when you make the bed, on an existing bed, just put it on as a mulch, and nature will slowly dig it into the soil for you. Understanding the drainage of your soil is very important, and I hope you do the perk test. And let me know what your results are in the comments below. If you believe that soil is important for growing great plants, you'll love my book called Soil Science for Gardeners. In it, I discuss all aspects of soil, including its chemical and physical characteristics, the importance of bacteria and fungi, and the impact that the rhizosphere has on plant health. I'll help you evaluate your soil to identify any problems and provide solutions to solve them. Learn about drainage, compaction, aggregation, and the right level of organic matter. In the process, I'll debunk a number of soil myths so you don't harm your soil. Soil Science for Gardeners even includes a personalized soil assessment and improvement plan. Before you buy any more products to fertilize or improve your soil, you owe it to yourself to read this book. Knowing the right things to do in the garden can save you hundreds of dollars. To find out more, click on the image of the book.